All time highs, baby. All time fucking highs. The S&P 500 currently sitting at above 480 as of right now. We'll see where we end up closing. As of today, we have another hour and a half in the markets. My name is Hamilton. I'm here with the Trading Initiative. And this is today's Markets in Focus. We're wrapping up the week here, January 19th of 2024 at all time highs. We knew it was coming. We knew it was coming. Guys, if you haven't already, I will link the video in the description below. Last March in 2023, we put out a video that says bears are in disbelief. The market is at the precipice of a brand new bull market. Caught a lot of flack on FinTwit specifically for that video. I encourage you to go and watch it. Not because we were right, but because the stuff that we discussed in that video is directly applicable to what happened all year and into 2024. Please go back and watch that. We have been long the market more so than not since the beginning of 2023. We laid out the thesis in March of 2023. The video right now is sitting at like 150 views. If you want to learn why and how we were able to take advantage of last year and now so far into this year, I highly encourage you to check that out. Without further ado, let's get into this week's moves, right? Let's go through and look at the, excuse me here, when we get to the intermarket relationship tab and we sort through by weekly moves, we can go ahead and see first off um, some great moves. We're sitting at all time highs. The Q is up 2.23% on the week, specifically that growth area of the market. Growth is back in control, which we're going to see in a second here when we go through some of the uh, the Coifin intermarket analysis stuff, but growth is back in the driver's seat. There was a period where value was outperforming growth for about two, two and a half weeks. We took our foot off the gas pedal, opening up new positions. But here we are once again, growth is reassuming their leadership role. And at all time highs, guys, statistically, we're going to go through this in a second. Very bullish. If you're uh, shorting, expecting a double top, low probability chance that hits. If it does hit, you're going to make a lot of money. Very, very low probability chance. This is a double top. You're going to want to be buying market leadership right now. The stocks in 2023 that established themselves as market leaders in January ended up being the market leaders by the end of 2023, almost an entire year of overperformance. Are we in the same area right now where the market leaders breaking out into all-time highs are going to continue to break out and lead the market through 2024? We think it's a pretty goddamn good shot. And so we're buying those. We're going to go through a couple of those. Cues though, all-time highs. The S&P 500 up 0.79 on the weekend into all-time highs. Guys, this is incredibly bullish. As a matter of fact, realistically, the only area of the market that has kind of gone kaputs is Bitcoin. Bitcoin post ETF, sell the event, not too sure. Still primary uptrend, but definitely some weakness there. Uh, I do want to point out that that intermarket relationship that we've noticed over the last few years, Bitcoin against um, the NASDAQ, specifically growth stocks, a highly correlative relationship they have. Generally speaking, if one goes up, the other's going up as well. They have diverged recently. As a matter of fact, going back about six, seven months, they started to diverge. And as of right now, we are seeing a uh, pullback, if you want to call it a pullback, in BTC. Like I said, the primary uptrend is still intact, but it is down 11% as of right now making this video. Another area of the market that I want to continue to stress a little bit of caution here is the small cap space. Completely different from what we were coming into in 2024. We reserve the right to be wrong at any time. When new data comes in and overrides our specific idea of what the market is going to do, I have no problem, absolutely no problem admitting that it was the wrong call or that the situation has changed, get the hell out of Dodge, reposition ourselves into new leadership roles when the market gives us opportunities. As of right now, we're going to look at this from an absolute standpoint. Small caps are not leading. We do not want to keep pumping money into the smalls and mids unless we're looking at software, cybersecurity, or semiconductors. Those are still outperforming. But the Russell as a whole, not performing well back underneath uh, that $198, $5,200 range. We don't want to be continuing to commit capital because right now, large cap and mega cap growth is outperforming everything. We have the S&P 500 at all-time highs. We have the NASDAQ at all-time highs. We have the Dow Jones Industrial at all-time highs. This is the second year of a bull market. Don't let anybody tell you differently. Let's look really quick. The last three months worth of sectors. Let's see. What do you expect to be the leader? Probably tech. And there it is. Tech. It's tech. This is why I was just saying at the beginning of this video, you want to find the market leaders because the leaders that led last year... We're set up in January. We had NVIDIA breaking out in late January. We had some big moves in Microsoft. We had some big moves in lots of different semiconductor spaces or uh, uh, companies in general back in January, February of, of last year. And they ended up, that was the leading sector in industry, tech and semis. We're getting the same sort of push here into 2024, into all-time highs. That's the difference. All-time highs are statistically very bullish opportunities to be long. You do not want to be shorting this stuff. As of right now, we're focused on things that are currently above SPY in the last three months in particular. Tech, financials, which have come down slightly but are starting to bounce, or long communications and consumer discretionary because that also rounds off that 
kind of big, large mega cap growth thesis that we have, although they have underperformed, right? The majority of your cash should still be long tech, not necessarily so much in communications and consumer discretionary. Tesla taking a big fat shit on the consumer discretionary space, but other areas of the market, specifically the retail industry, which we're going to see right now, actually, are doing relatively well. So even though the big boys at the top, Amazon not doing bad, but definitely not in a leadership role yet, retail though is doing remarkably well. So as Amazon and Tesla are kind of, Tesla straight up getting killed and Amazon kind of hovering around its previous highs, retail has held up relatively well. So as consumer discretionary underperformed by over the last three months, retail has overperformed. Think big leader names like Abercrombie and Fitch, et cetera. Kind of harder to trade from an option standpoint, but still leadership roles. So if you can find a slot, feel free to grab something like that. They're still showing leadership roles. Semiconductors. This is the leading industry group over the last three months. It's the leading industry group over the last year. Guys, you got to be constantly looking at opportunities to grab stuff where you have clear risk levels. I'm not saying go out and ape into NVIDIA, but I am saying that, for example, we're going to go through a trade idea that we just put on uh, yesterday, actually. It's AMD. Right, AMD into all-time highs gave us a nice little risk level to be able to get in. We don't just want to ape randomly into these semiconductors. Find your risk level so you know where you're right and where you're wrong. AMD giving us an opportunity. ARM also giving us a new opportunity soon. Both of those are semiconductor names that are moving in the right direction. Home Builders, another space that has outperformed over the last year by magnitudes. Who would have expected that? The beginning of 2023 coming out of that bear market in 2022. If you had told me Home Builders are going to outperform literally everything, I would have said, what are you smoking right now? Is it crack cocaine? Is it from Hunter Biden? Hit me up, right? Because I would not have ever expected this to happen. And yet here we are. We have two positions, BLDR, AZEC, both of those holding up relatively well. But from an option standpoint, once again, it's a little bit harder to get in this stuff. So look at your higher beta growth stocks, specifically large omega cap tech stuff, semiconductors. You have Marvell breaking out, AMD breaking out, NVIDIA is leading the market, etc. We also have some regional bank stuff, although they have come slightly down. We have old positions in these things. They're free trades that are still on our books for March contracts. We still like regional banks, but probably not the time to be adding into this stuff yet. We want to see it start to catch a bid and bounce. Right now, it's just slowly depreciating. Positions on the books that are free, totally fine to continue to hold, but we don't want to continue to commit capital until we see some strength. But here we got internet and software names rounding off that tech sector that are outperforming SPY and in uptrends, right? You're getting the general idea here. We're trying to get long again, and we're already long, large and mega cap tech stocks. I mean, that's realistically the space that you should be focused on. Looking at market caps really quick, we can really see it here, right? We can really see the overperformance specifically coming off of uh, the beginning of 2024. If you were trading with this from November through the end of December in 2023, there was a absolute shit ton of over uh, performance in small caps and mid caps. We were buying high beta stocks left and right, breaking out of these nice stage one accumulation zones. They performed very well for us for about six weeks. And then all of a sudden, at the end of 2023 into 2024, the market started to pull back. And guess what? We started not we, but the market started to buy large caps again. I don't control what the market buys. We simply just need to identify and follow if we like the trade, and we did. So we started to see the reemergence of large cap tech stocks, mega cap tech stocks catching a bid on a relative basis. We saw everything else start to come down. And so we said, listen, if we're still bullish, which we are, obviously, we're in the second year of a bull market, fourth year of a presidential election cycle, which is very bullish, generally speaking, specifically when a sitting president is seeking re-election, Watch out for that video that's coming out relatively soon on our 2024 predictions of what the markets are going to do here. But we saw everything else against SPY come down. We saw large caps start to catch a bid. And so over the last week, week and a half, we didn't catch the absolute bottom. That's not our game. We started to accumulate this stuff again. And so far, we're at all-time highs and the trades are working, right? So that's where we're our head's at right now. It's large cap, mega cap, growthy kind of stocks with a... With a uh, uh, tech stocks being like the number one area that we really want to be pushing our cash into right now, right? So let's look at stuff really quick. I want to point out, uh, you know, we always do like a little bit of a, a Twitter thing here. I want you to look at this really quick. For guys that expect a double top to happen, and I'm actually going to show you the stats behind a double top in a second. Look at this chart from Bank of America. Brilliant. Illustrates secular bear markets and secular bull markets. I want to tell you right now, if you're a bear, you are not going to like this chart. But this is what historical price action looks like. If you want to become a student of market history, study these cycles. I highly encourage you to do so because they provide a very important framework for your trades and investments, guys. Look at this stuff. If you go back, you can see that these secular bull markets coincidentally matched up with kind of big global problems, right? Global fiascos, if you will. Um, and so what we are noticing here 
specifically is that we are in a new secular bull market starting in 20, shouldn't say new, but it, within 2020, 2013, excuse me. And these secular bull markets tend to run for 20, 25 years, right? If you look at it through history, secular bull, 16 years, secular bull, 20 years, the secular bears run almost the same amount of time, almost 13 years here, almost, uh, what is this, 14 years here, uh, 13 years here, here we are, 2013 to present, we still have an additional five to potentially 10 years of a secular bull market. That doesn't mean there's not going to be corrections. That doesn't mean there's not going to be a bear market within the broader secular bull market. What it means though, overarching from a long point of view here, you should be more bullish than bearish. That's it. You don't want to buy every dip Specifically, if you're trading within the time frame that we are, which is anywhere between 45 to 120 days out, there are definitely areas of the market you do not want to be buying the dip. 2022, great example. But from a secular standpoint, from a broader standpoint, we are in the middle, maybe third, uh, third uh, quarter here of the secular bull market. So if you're shorting this all-time high, you are shorting historically a great opportunity. Just go back and look at all the previous all-time highs. A great opportunity to enter new positions for the next leg up. Because I want to prove it to you, we can go to actual double top stats. These are double top stats from Thomas Bukowski himself at thepatternsite.com. Highly encourage you guys to go through this. Best technical website ever. Quantifies every single thing you can possibly imagine. Indicators, studies, chart patterns, candlestick patterns, everything. He says that during bull markets, these double tops are middle of the range. And that they fail quite a lot, as a matter of fact. Break-even failure rates at 20%. Percentage of meeting price targets, only 43. So less than half of the time, this stuff actually plays out the way that it's supposed to. Inside of a secular bull market, at all-time highs, it is disadvantageous to be shorting based off of the stats of the chart pattern itself. And once again, based off of the secular bull market that we are in. All right, so if you want to, feel free. Absolutely, it's your money. I'm just trying to show you based off of statistics and numbers that the trade is not going to be easy if you are looking too short with any sort of time into this all-time high. For the rest of us that are more focused on making money and not about being right, we're going to go ahead and buy some fucking stocks here. So let's go ahead and start off by looking at the Dow. Let's go and look at the Dow really quick. The Dow here, we're sitting near all-time highs. here. This will be an all-time high close if we were to close up here. Looks fantastic. Let me go ahead and point this out. We uh, talked through this during our monthly charting session. We go all the way back to these recent all-time highs. Does it look like a time to be shorting? Please tell me. Does it look like a time to be shorting? No, it absolutely doesn't. Every single time the Dow starts to break out into new all-time highs, generally speaking, the next leg up. The next leg up. Three biggest sectors, financials, healthcare, and tech. So this is a broader view of the market that is not tech dominated. Even the S&P 500 is tech dominated being 30% of the S&P 500. The Dow, I think it's somewhere like 10 to 12 or 10 to 15, something like that. An overwhelmingly large amount of it is healthcare and financials. So if you have healthcare and financials that are supposedly not doing fantastic, and yet the Dow is still at all-time highs, come on, guys. Come on, guys. You should be looking to buy more than sell at least this year. Go ahead and look at the Qs. Once again, if you're a technical trader, this is a rounded bottom breakout into new all-time highs. This is not an opportunity to be looking to short with any sort of time. If you didn't think this was a market index, you would be buying this long. What is the difference? If you're a technical trader, you follow price. You follow price. And this specific setup is bullish. Any other chart, you'd be buying it. But because it's an index, people want to sit there and say, there's no way. There's absolutely a way. You learned last year that if you were a bear, you got fucking run over more often than not. It's probably going to happen again. I'm telling you, trends tend to trend longer than you want them to. So catch the ride. Catch a ride on the trend, boys. S&P 500, once again, looks like we're going to close if we don't fall back within the next two and a half hours. We're going to close at all-time highs today. Same setup as the Dow. Same setup as the Qs. Is it surprising to see the S&P 500 follow the Qs? Nope. It's not. The biggest stocks in the world are in the queues. If the biggest stocks in the world are hitting all-time highs just from waiting alone, you have to assume the S&P 500 is probably going to follow, at the very minimum, the general direction. Queues broke out first. SPY is now up there as well. This is a breakout in all-time highs. Once again, if this were any other type of chart, you would be looking to buy this, not short this. IWM, I mentioned that we're not looking to add exposure in here. We don't want to. 
If it finds a floor here, that's great. We're going to wait till it's back up and over 198.5 to 200. There's no reason for us to get in here. It's messy. The only three industry groups within the small and mid-cap space that we're still looking and holding, semiconductors, um, cybersecurity, and software, those are still overperforming. But the vast majority of small caps, I don't give a shit what Brett says. I don't give a shit about small cap industrials still, still running. I'm not trading small cap industrials. There's no options availability on those motherfuckers, and they move at 1% ADR. Congratulations, they're hitting all-time highs. I'm going to go trade something with 3 to 5% ADR, moving in the right direction that I want and trade that instead. You can spend six months in a small cap industrial and make your 12% and pat yourself on the back. I count that as a shitty opportunity cost right there when we can find other areas of the market that are going to move faster and at the very minimum in the same direction. So I'm going to stay out of these small caps uh, for, for the foreseeable future until IWM wants to start playing ball. Most important sector in the market, obviously tech, all-time high. I don't need to say anything else. Look at this, all-time high. It's been at an all-time high for a long time. This is how trends work. You wanna bet against the trend, eventually it's gonna work. You're gonna make a bunch of money, hopefully if you hold the trend long enough to the downside, but you're going to lose a majority of your trades. That's the trade-off, low win rate, high reward when you win. You don't get both. If you get both, you're probably a fucking liar. That's how this shit works. It's just simple math. Semiconductors, arguably the most important industry group in the entire world. New theory out here saying that semiconductors are kind of the new Dow theory with semiconductors showing that if they're in an uptrend, which I don't know if you want to count this as an uptrend, but this looks like a fucking parabolic move over the last few months, um, that the world economy is probably not doing that bad if demand is still sky high for semiconductors. I mean, every business nowadays requires semiconductors in some capacity, even if it comes to the computers that they're using at their construction company, right? So semiconductors screaming here, all-time high, led by NVIDIA. We're going to talk AMD in a second. We're going to talk ARM in a second. But we just had blowout earnings with TSM, which is arguably the most important international semiconductor company in the world, and demand was through the roof. They gapped up, right? Very hard to see semiconductors coming back down with any real vigor here to retest all-time highs. It looks like we're breaking out and we have a new regime in. Semiconductors are at all-time highs. Buy this. The one area of the market, or I guess the next two charts I want to show you, these are the watch out areas of the market. Now, I'm going to go ahead and delete these because this was for a chart that we posted inside of TTI. It doesn't make sense here. But we are very aware that the dollar and the overall market inversely correlated. When the dollar goes up, market comes down. When the market goes um, up, the dollar ten, tends to come down. I want to point out that the market is not moving the dollar. The dollar is moving the market. So the dollar is very important for us to watch inside of TTI. And if you're speculating out 45, 120 days or even longer, the dollar should be very, very important to you, right? You want to set levels. Right now, we said inside of TTI, if the dollar is trading above the 200-day moving average, we want to exercise caution opening up new positions. That's it. We're playing by the same playbook we played by last year because it worked well. Over the last few weeks, the dollar had been catching a bid. The market slowly grinding to the upside, big pullbacks. It was shaking everybody out. We just kind of rode the wave. We weren't necessarily buying a bunch of new positions, but with positions that we had on the books, as long as we weren't getting stopped out, we were riding the wave. Dixie above the 200-day moving average, somewhere above 103.5 was watch out, caution. We don't want to be opening anything new here. We're still watching it. Obviously, markets are at all-time high, but the dollar is hovering around there as well. So we're bullish, but we're not idiots. We understand that the dollar matters. We're watching where the dollar is. If we start breaking above the 200-day moving average and uh, the markets are hitting all-time highs, we know that there's something weird going on and we're going to continue to exercise caution, as bullish as we are. Maybe now is not the time to be pushing the gas pedal down. We're focused right now on quality over quantity. From end of uh, October through the end of December was quantity. Buy fucking everything breaking out. You're going to make a bunch of money. Right now, breath is deteriorating. The dollar is pressing. The strongest stocks in the world are breaking out in a new all-time highs. So let's just own quality. This is not the time to be owning quantity. Okay, so watch the dollar here around the 200-day moving average. The other one I want to point out, bonds, TLT in particular. Guys, bonds and dollars flipped in June of last year, the correlation. They are positively correlated going back uh, about seven, eight months. This is representative of the market switching from a deflationary to an inflationary regime, and this can last decades, guys. That's why that 60-40 portfolio was absolutely trash last year. Worst 12 months on record, I believe, ever for the 60-40 portfolio allocation, and that's specifically because they started trading in tandem, something that they haven't done in multiple decades, but now they do. The reason why I say watch out is TLT has been diverging from the overall equity market. So unless we expect that that correlation is breaking down between positive correlation bonds and stocks, which you don't yet, this is cause for a little bit of concern. What we're looking for here is a potential 92 break in TLT. If we're back down below 92 in TLT, either the correlation is gone and we're now trading back within an inversely correlated 
universe of bonds versus stocks, but we don't think that yet. We really don't, specifically because the dollar is controlling the market. Every time the dollar goes up, stocks come down. We think this intermarket relationship is still here. This is another one of those, watch out. It's cautionary. It's not necessarily risk off, sell everything. But if TLT starts flipping below 92, I mean, whatever we just had from the middle of October through the end of 2023 is at risk. We're at jeopardy of potentially starting to break back down in TLT, and we expect if that happens that the market has an opportunity to also pull back as well. So we're exercising caution below 92. We're not there yet, currently trading 93.86, probably another two or three trading sessions if it wants to get down there just based off of volatility. But dollar, bonds, we are very, very keen on watching where these things are. Four trades that I want to point out really quick that we've taken this week and I think are an opportunity for you guys. If you're on the email list, you got these trades emailed to you. We're doing a daily newsletter right now. It's free. Please sign up. Link is in the description below. We send you scans and a trade idea almost every single day, along with market insights, um, videos that we put out, webinars, et cetera. Nice little opportunity for guys that aren't paying to join TTI to get in on some of the material and leverage some of our trade ideas to hopefully make you a couple more bucks. We like Uber above 64. This was a trade that we took twice last year. We bought it here off of the breakout above 37.5. It was a big winner for us. And then the trade that went out in the newsletter above 47 back in late, I believe, October, we bought the March 60s. Those are still on the books. Those are up like 350% right now. So congrats to those of you watching this that are still holding that. As of right now, we like the 64 pivot in Uber. We're buying the June 80s, right? For under, I believe, $2. I believe they were. Don't quote me on that. But the June 80s below $2 were what we were targeting. We're up there. We were patient. We wanted to see Uber flip the all-time high. We're coming up on an ER report. This is a great opportunity to get into a market leader that is continuing to lead into an all-time highs. Remember, quality over quantity. Uber, all-time highs, market leader last year, a new opportunity to get back in. If you do have a previous position on Uber, treat this new position as, as a brand new position. You still have those March 60s because they're still gaining. The trend's still moving in your direction. Treat this new June opportunity as a completely different trade, okay? Meta here, we wanted to get long above 384 at all-time highs. This was another big trade for us. We traded this three times last year. All three of them were winners. We're expecting the fourth one here to be a winner as well. We did open this today. We front ran the all-time high breakout. We like it. We like this up to 400 first, so a, a pretty narrow price target here, but we have to reasonably expect that the nice big round number of 400 is going to give us some resistance there. Supply comes in. That's generally how these big uh, big round numbers work. And then 440, 460, 480, 500. Just run the gambit up $20 each time. That's what we like in the meta play. We opened these, I believe, for under $2 as well. We grabbed the 450, 460 June play. 450, 460 call debit spreads for under $2 or $2 maximum. That sets us up for a four to one setup with max profit being $800. Listen, this was a market leader. Look how much it's up off of the October lows from 2022. Are you going to bet against Meta into all time highs with a market at all time highs? I'm fucking not. Let's ride the train here. Zuckerberg for the win. Let's hopefully we hit four for four in the last 12 months on this Meta, meta chart. This is fantastic. So, so far we have the Uber trade. We have the meta trade. I'm going to show you AMD because it's the large cap semiconductor stock that's breaking out here. I want to point out that NVIDIA, very expensive, awesome, fantastic stock, very expensive trade. Very, very expensive trade. We're knocked on 600 bucks. If you were able to nail this, congratulations. You just made an absolute killing and I'm jealous. I did not grab this. It was too expensive. It was too risky for me for where I was looking to get in. And so what we did instead was we took AMD. Semiconductors are sitting at all-time highs being led to the upside with NVIDIA, which is a U.S. domestic semiconductor uh, company. AMD, number two, baby. All-time high U.S. domestic semiconductor space as well. And we have a risk on level 16150 for us to be able to go out and actually buy the trade, right? This is an awesome opportunity. We're coming up on an ER report. TSM just blew um, their ER out of the water. And uh, bullish momentum regime, I'm, I mean, we love it. We like the AMD play. It gives us an opportunity to get into a large cap semiconductor name right now. We bought the 200, 210 out for June for $2. Another four to one setup. Max profit, 800. Max loss, 200. Four to one setup. We like this particular play into AMD. We also did some funky stuff by selling some call put spreads to fund a portion of this. I'm not going to get into it in the markets and focus video. If you're in TTI, you know what I'm talking about. If you're interested, join TTI. We essentially sold some call credit spreads, excuse me, put credit spreads to collect credit to use to pay for the actual debit that we paid for the call uh, debit spreads. Sound confusing? It's not too confusing, but it allowed us to get into a way cheaper opportunity, maximize the risk to reward. So it goes from about a four to one, it plays out perfectly. It'll be up to about six to eight to one. We'll see where we're at. 
when we're around 200, 210, if we get up there, but we expect to. Last trade I want to talk about really quick is one that's dear to my heart because it was one of the biggest winners of 2024 for me, excuse me, 2023. I've killed this fucking trade. I have killed it. Absolutely murdered this, and I've repositioned myself on the dip, and I'm killing it again. <laughs> Please, this is the NVIDIA spinoff IPO. This is a large cap semiconductor spa uh, name, excuse me, not space. This is our big blue sky recent IPO breakout. We bought it at 56.5. We re added on the pullback in towards this 60 level. We bought it again on the pullback near 68. We're targeting right now the July 100s. I'm up 100%. I don't know if you want to tail. I don't know if you want to buy shares at all time high, but this is an opportunity to add. So even though I'm pointing out the chart to you, I have no play for you. You find something on the chain that you like that makes sense to you and your risk profile. This is a fucking awesome stock. I'm, I'm a bandwagon fan on this one. Big win for me in 2023. It's a big win for me so far in 2024. Looking like it wants to close here at all-time highs today. Listen, if you haven't caught the theme, semiconductors are going nuts. Do you think it stops anytime soon? I have absolutely no idea. If it's a bubble, you can make a lot of money running the front side of the bubble. Who's, who knows when the top's going to happen? Trends tend to trend longer than you can expect. Guys, this was our Markets in Focus. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Once again, all-time highs and spy. I appreciate you for taking the time to watch this. Please like and subscribe to the video if you find this type of content helpful. I enjoy making it uh, specifically when you guys are engaging with me. It's really fun. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, leave them in the comments below, and I'll catch you in the next video.